Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're going to do something a little different on the channel than what we normally do. I'm going to show you guys how to make these skulls out of plaster and silicone and all sorts of materials you can find at your local Home Depot or other local shops like that. You can put them up for yard decor or for Halloween parties or whatever else you're doing this Halloween. And I know it's kind of a weird year with the quarantine and pandemic and all that. that we can't really have big parties and all that sort of stuff. But that doesn't mean we can't get spooky. So let's get started. All right, so first off, let's hit the materials that you're gonna need for this. First, you'll need some type one silicone, not type two. You'll also need some acrylic paint to mix into the silicone to make the mold, along with some glycerin also going in that silicone to make the mold, and then some paint thinner for the very first layer of that silicone that you'll see me paint on a little bit later in the video. You'll need plaster for the mother mold and for the skulls themselves. And last, you will need some sort of a skull to make the first original mold. It can be plastic or ceramic or whatever. All right, so the first step is to prepare the skull that you'll be making the mold on top of. You'll need to fill all the deep holes and all the gaps in it with some sort of clay or putty to make sure that the silicone doesn't wrap around and get your skull stuck in there. Uh, the skull that I used had some uh, like tunnels going through where those cheekbones are, so I needed to fill that with clay so it doesn't get stuck. It also helps to cover the skull with a thin layer of oil to let the skull release itself from the silicone mold once you're done painting the silicone on. All right, so for this first layer, this is gonna be like the details layer. You're gonna to wanna to mix a little bit of that paint thinner in with some silicone and some glycerin. And you're gonna paint a thin layer all across the skull itself to get all the details in there. Now this layer you want thinner than the rest of the layers of silicone that you'll put on there so that you can get all the little nooks and crannies and sort of stuff so you can get as much detail in your final mold as possible. And you might wanna do a couple layers of this thin coat first just to make sure you're covering the entire skull. So I found it easiest to switch between the brown layer and the clear layer uh, with each subsequent layer of that silicone on the mold. It just helps you to see where you've gone over a little more easily. So you're going to want to create a sort of like ridge there on the top, looks sort of like a mohawk so that when you put the mother mold together, you can help those bits come back together after it's cut. All right, so once these silicone layers are up to about an inch or two inches, you're going to wait for that to dry, it should only be like an hour or two. And then you're going to start on the mother mold made out of plaster and water. The mother mold is just a plaster layer that you put around the main silicone mold that just holds it in place and keeps it together while you are filling it with the plaster and uh, spreading that plaster around on the inside of the silicone mold. So basically what you're going to do is spread plaster onto the top of that silicone mold. You might want to put some sort of like Vaseline or some sort of oil on the outside of that silicone mold as well, just to make sure that the plaster layer doesn't stick to the silicone mold. And you're going to do one side at a time with a small ridge along the edge, keeping the bottom open there to make sure you have a opening that you can cut into the silicone mold that you can ultimately pour the plaster into when you're making the individual skulls. And I found it helpful to layer in strips of cloth every once in a while just to help to keep it all together and keep that really solid. I just used a uh, cut up t-shirt for that. And you can see in the video here that the skull is raised up a little bit. That's actually on an empty duct tape roll, just that cardboard bit and that helps to keep the skull elevated so you can get plaster all around the edges, but then it also helps to keep an opening in the bottom so you can create that hole to pour the plaster in. All right, so after the first side of the mother mold is completely dry, you're gonna go ahead and do the other side with the same technique. The only difference is that you're gonna put a layer of either like Vaseline or oil or something like that anywhere on that first side of the mother mold where the new plaster is gonna to touch it. The new plaster will stick to the old plaster and it will not come off if you don't have some sort of barrier there to help to keep them separated. Once the plaster is dry on both sides of the mother mold, you're going to pry those two bits apart. It might take a little bit of coaxing because they do kind of tend to stick together a little bit, but you pop those sides off and then ultimately pop that silicone mold out of the two. After you have the silicone mold out of the mother mold, you're gonna take an X-Acto knife or a razor blade or something like that and you're gonna cut along the bottom top and the front of the silicone mold to release the inner skull from the mold. Cut a small hole in the bottom of the silicone where you're gonna pour the actual plaster into to make the skulls, and then just let everything sit overnight and dry and harden up before going and pouring any plaster for skulls. Then pop the skull out of the silicone and you should have what is basically a negative of that original skull in that silicone. All right, now getting to actually pouring the plaster and making the skulls themselves. You're going to make mixtures of the plaster and water and pour those into the skulls. Uh, thinner layers at first and then thicker as you get the, uh, the first couple coats in there. After you pour each layer in there, usually with a funnel, you're going to turn the whole mold around to make sure you're evenly coating the entire inside of the mold. Especially that face is important to get because that's the most detailed area of the skull. 
And you're gonna wanna take a belt or some sort of strap to tie around the mother mold just to keep it all in place while you're pouring each layer of the plaster. Once you have four, five, six layers of plaster inside the mold there, uh, you're kind of going to need some trial and error to see exactly how many layers you need with your plaster mixture and your mold. But uh, once you have those layers in there, you're just going to let it sit for about an hour, and then you're going to start taking the mold apart and see what you got inside. So the last two steps after you take the skull out of the mold are just to kind of clean it up. The first, unless you're very lucky or just way better at this than I am, uh, you're gonna have some imperfections in the skulls that come out. So maybe take like the back of a knife or something like that and just scrape while the plaster is still relatively soft, any imperfections or bits of the skull that are protruding too much or inconsistencies, stuff like that. And just shave it down to be a little smoother. And then take a relatively thick layer of plaster and cover that bottom of the skull just to basically plug up the hole where you were pouring in the plaster in the first place. At that point, you pretty much should be good to go. Uh, the nice thing about plaster is even dry plaster, you can stick wet plaster onto. So if there's any spots that you need to add a little bit to or take a little bit away, it should be relatively easy, especially within that first 24 hours or so when the plaster is still not super hard yet. So the total cost of the project for me was about $35, $40, something in there. Um, I had a couple of the materials lying around the house already, but if you have some of this stuff, it might be even cheaper for you than it was for me. You can buy all this stuff at like a Home Depot or a Lowe's. I think the only thing that I got outside of there was the glycerin that was at like a CVS or something like that. All right, so I know this was a very different video than what I usually put on the channel, but I hope you guys liked it. I just thought it'd be fun to kind of show something with Halloween coming up and all that. Let me know if you like this. And also next week and the week after, I've got two releases with bands of mine that are coming out that are both Halloween related tunes. So that'll be very fun. So if you guys are interested, I'd really appreciate if you guys check those out. Those are coming out the 24th and the 31st. So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you liked the video, please feel free to hit like and subscribe and check out the rest of the channel. Have an awesome Halloween, guys. Thanks so much.